Greetings friend, I will share with you three amazing tips about Sudoku X-Wings while I solve this puzzle by Audish. The last tip is the most effective. I'll also share some fun facts about my Friday featured setter. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. The first thing we can look at, you got this one cutting across and this one coming up. I mean, there's only two possibilities for a one and block two. So what I just did is called Snyder Notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate, mark it in case you solve one of these cells, you can solve the other one right away. These ones also act as a pointing pair, which means since the ones are limited to column six in block two, they can't be anywhere else along the column. And I'll show you that in just a bit. You see these two ones and this one means a one can only be in this spot in block nine. And now with these two ones and this one and this pointing pair of ones, we can solve for one here in block eight. And then with these two ones, excuse me, these two ones and this one, two possibilities for a one there, I'll mark it. And we have three possibilities for a one, so I'm not gonna mark that. So I told you I was gonna give you tips about X-Wings. My first tip that you need to know and X wing is a single candidate strategy. And what that means is you don't want to look first for it. You want to wait till you fill out as much as block as possible. Because X wings also prey on having restrictions in the blocks. And I'll explain more of that in my second tip. But right now, we just want to see if we can get some easy solves like what we did with the ones here. Okay, let's look at the twos here. We got two twos in columns eight and nine. Only place left for a two in block three is right there and then with this two coming up and this two cutting across we have another pointing pair of twos here in block two and so with this pointing pair and this two the two cutting across row now we can solve for two right there with these twos one place for two in block seven and now with these twos we can mark two spots for two in block four also with this two coming up and this two cutting across we have two spots for two up here in block one. Okay, let's look at the threes. We got two threes here and this three means we can solve for three up here in block one. And then with these two threes and this three, we got a pointing pair of threes, or actually we just got a Snyder pair of threes here in block four. What else can we do with the threes? Well, this three and this three, there's only two possibilities for three in block nine. So that's another pointing pair of threes which will point across with these two threes, we can solve for three here in block eight. Nice job with the threes. All right, let's look at the fours. You got these two fours, which limits the fours of these two spots here in block one. And then what you might notice is if you look across here, there's this one, two, three, and six inside block five. You got the four and five cutting through, well, there's only two places left for the four and the five to be. They gotta be in one of these two spots. And since it's the only two possibilities for the four and the five, that's called a hidden pair. And that means no other candidates can be in those two cells. So that's our hidden pair. I'm gonna highlight that because it does something really great for us here. Because now you have this four and this four, and these fours come down, these fours act as a pointing pair as well. So fours can't be anywhere else along the column because we know it has to be in one of these two spots. So we can solve this cell here for a four. And this is a neat little trick Audish put in here. And if you want to get great exclusive puzzle packs like and solve puzzles like this and other exclusive content, then check the pinned comment and join the Smarty Party and get a monthly puzzle pack from me and please consider checking out the rest of my Buy Me a Coffee page and invest in the future of smart hobbies. I really appreciate it. Right now, I'm looking to try to go to Vid Summit. I'll be going next year. Didn't quite make it this year. And maybe either the US or the World Sudoku Championship so I can get better at Sudoku and at creating videos like this. Okay, so we've hit the four right there. Now let's look. This also acts as a pointing pair for these fives. And so with the fives coming down and this five cutting across here, two possibilities for a five and they become a pointing pair. Fives can't be in either of these spots. You got this five, 
we can solve for a five here in block seven. And this is gonna unleash some more solving here. This is really nice what Oddish did because now with this five cutting up and this five cutting across, we can now solve this for five, which displaces that Snyder four. It means we can solve that cell immediately for a four. And we're gonna be able to do some more solving here because what that did now is it limited the three cells that could be in here. We're looking for a one, two, or nine. Well, I got a one and two right here, so this actually has to be a nine. And then with this one, this has to be your one displacing that Snyder two. And now we can displace that Snyder two and solve for two here. And with this one, displace that one and solve for one right here. You see how much cleanup we just did? And with this one, we can displace that Snyder one and solve for one here. And with this two, you actually displace the two and solve back right there. I didn't mean to remove that two, but look at all of the solving we just did. This is great. All right, and now after doing those twos, we can look here and at the fours, okay? Because we got this four, this pointing pair of fours, and this four we can solve for four now up here in block two. And now with these fives, and using the same hidden pair as a pointing pair, we can solve for five up there. This is great. Look at all that mileage we got out of that hidden pair. But we're not done, and we haven't even gotten to the X-Wing yet. Okay? But I did. you do want to make all of these solves, as many solves as you can. And in fact, we can do one more here, because that five displaces this Snyder five, and we can solve for five right there as soon as I get out of color mode. Okay. After doing the five, now what we want to do is look at the sixes here. You'll notice that with these two, with this six, six can only be in two spots right here, okay? And then with this six, two can only be in two spots right there. All right, so we have, you know, Snyder two. So there's some restrictions going on here. There's something else going, and this is my second big tip. And in fact, before I give you the tip, I want you to share this puzzle with a friend and see what they do and they get to this spot in the puzzle. See how they move forward. Because I'm going to let you in on my little secret. And my second tip is this. You want to look, when you're looking for X-Wings, you want to look at rows and columns that have the same types of restrictions. You notice that column 3 and column 7 both have 6 cells filled in in the same rows, rows one, two, and three, five, seven, and eight. Okay, there's a lot of restriction, similar restriction there. So work at sixes, you know, what are the three missing cells here? It's gonna be these cells. And then if you notice this six right here, how it cuts across, a six can't be in either one of those two cells. And so now the sixes are limited in column three and column seven to the same two rows, rows four, and not. Okay, so what we know is if this was a six, these cells couldn't be a six, and this cell would have to be a six, right? Conversely, if this is not a six, well, these two cells would need to be, would be a six, and then this cell couldn't be a six. So either way, we're going to have a six here and here, or here and here. And this is our Sudoku X wing that we are looking for. And this is awesome because now we're going to be able to make some eliminations. It's going to help us move forward in this solve. And before I get to what eliminations we can make in the next key step in this puzzle, I do want to share my fun fact about Oddish. I asked Oddish, who helps you with your testing and your ideas? And Oddish said that for testing, he likes to use the puzzle testing submissions channel in Cracking the Cryptic. So he gets some help from other setters and after he's done his own self-testing. So he's got to be satisfied with the puzzle before he even lets it out for testing. He's gone through several iterations. I can be uh, akin to that. There's a couple of puzzles I've tested for him. We've gone through more than one iteration. He's very grateful for the CTC community and the support they've given him. And I love how the creators help each other out in uh, this community. Thank you so much for sharing that, Oddish. And if you want to learn more about how X-Wings work and solve them, Check out the, my X-Wing tutorial. And while you're at it, subscribe to some more hobbies if you love to solve Sudoku X-Wings. Okay, now time for my third tip. 
I told you that it's a single can strategy. I told you you want to look for restrictions in similar rows and columns. And now the third tip is this. You can eliminate all the candidates you see in the cover sets. You're like, Tim, like, what's a cover set? Well, the row or column, which only has two possibilities, the conjugate pair of sixes, those are called the base sets. The cover sets are the rows where they share in common. And that's where it has more than two possibilities. And this is where we can do the eliminations. So what we can do here in block four is you can eliminate all the sixes across these two cells. And so the only two places left for a six now in block four would be these two cells, right? The one here where this X wing is and this other one, because this can't be a six anymore because of that six. Now, over here, same thing. You can have a six here. You can have it here, here, or here. So there's a lot of places where a six could be. We're not going to be able to mark that. Versus you come down here and you'll notice that you can't have a six here anymore, right? So this can't be a six. What can it be? It looks like it can be a seven or an eight. And now if you look up column five, where can a six be? Can't be here anymore. Can't be here because the six here has to be in this one spot where you'd marked the six before. So now that has to be your six. Awesome. And this is what we can do with our X wing. I'm actually going to leave these up because we're going to use this a little bit later in the solve. Okay. Now we have a full house here. Let's see what we can do solving wise. Since we just put in that six, this out has to be a seven. And we're going to move on here with a little bit more solving. What can we do here? We got, it looks like a seven or an eight. Well, I got my seven there. I got this seven. So now this has to be a seven. That's got to be an eight. Okay. And since we got the eight there, the seven here, we're looking for an eight or a nine. Well, I got my eight here. So this is your nine, and that's going to be your eight. And so with these two eights, this now has to be the last place for an eight here in the block. And then we're looking for a six or a seven right here. I'll mark that. But that leaves only one cell remaining here. And it looks like we don't have a nine. So we can put the nine right there, and then this is going to end up being your seven. Okay. Now we've done all that, where do we go next? Well, you notice we got two possibilities here. It looks like a four and a six. We got two possibilities here. That's an eight or a nine. Okay, I wanted to mark that, but now we're gonna move on a little bit more. What can we do next? Let's go down here. What's remaining now here in row nine? We need a six or a seven. Well, I got a seven here. So this actually has to be your six and that's gonna be your seven. And since we know this is part of an X-wing. We know immediately we can solve this cell across from it for a six. So I wanted to use that, which displaces the Snyder six here, solves for a six, displaces that Snyder three. So I wanted to use that nice coloring to show you that we could solve those two cells pretty quickly. All right, we can get rid of this six because we marked it in the block and in the column, and we can solve this cell now for a seven as soon as I get out of color mode. All right, and then we got an eight. So we have another full house here. So what are we missing? Looks like we don't have a seven yet. Awesome. So we'll put the seven here with these two sevens and these two sevens. We're going to get back to some cross hatching and solve for a seven right there. And then what we can look at is since we marked the seven there, this now has to be the six and that has to be seven. We disambiguated that naked pair. Okay. And what do we have left here? We got another full house. Always want to solve that when I can because now that's going to be a six which is gonna help us disambiguate the four six up here. Nice. And then we have another full house here. So that means we can solve for a nine right there. And with these two nines, we can solve for the nine here, which gives us an eight right there. All right, and then with these two eights, uh, we need an eight in one of those spots, but we can do better than that because we can look right here and go, okay, I only got one cell remaining. It's gotta be a three. This place in this nine or three. So we know we can solve that for a three. So all this for a nine, which disambiguates the eight and the nine right there. Nice. And now we got another full house in column nine. And so that looks like that's gotta be a five, which helps us solve the four and the five right here. Okay, we got two cells remaining. One of them's gotta be an eight. I see the eight here. So this has to be the eight. And the last digit is a four. Check out this video to see how another one of my Friday feature setters used X-Wings in her puzzle. Please consider supporting me through that Buy Me a Coffee link in the description below. Thank you so much, Audit, for being my Friday featured center. You've been amazing, and thank you so much for watching.